Hey, Econ students, this is Jacob Clifford. Macroeconomics Unit 3 is by far the most important unit in the course. So to make sure you're ready for your next quiz, the unit exam, the final exam, or the AP exam, let's do some quick practice. We're gonna be working on three different skills, so I divided these questions up into three parts. Each time, pause this video, try it on your own, then start the video back up, and I'll go over the answers. Here we go with part one, good luck. Okay, how'd you do on this one? Pretty easy, right? Sometimes your teacher or professor will tell you exactly what to draw. Draw a negative output gap or full employment or a positive output gap. That's awesome, but sometimes they give you little clues like this one, you have to figure it out. In this case, the question says there's no cyclical unemployment, which means we're at full employment, so this is the graph that you drew. Now, I know it's easy, but verify your labeling. Double check you have price level on the y-axis, real GDP on the x-axis, you have PL1, Y1, and YFE showing full employment. So for your next quiz or exam, make sure you can draw a negative output gap, a positive output gap, full employment, and decode those clues that your teacher will probably give you. Okay, moving on to part two, good luck. To answer all these questions, you need to know the relationship between interest rates and consumer spending. When interest rates fall, it's cheaper to take out a loan, so consumer spending increases. This would increase aggregate demand in the short run and lead to a positive output gap. And you also need to recognize this question's only referring to the changes in consumer spending. Yes, a lower interest rate would also affect producers. They take out more loans, buy more machines, tools, and factories. It would also shift the short run aggregate supply, but this question is telling you to ignore that. It says, based solely on the changes in consumer spending, what's gonna happen? to the following. So lower interest rates will increase spending and increase aggregate demand, so the price level will go up, the real GDP will go up, and the unemployment rate will decrease. But that's all in the short run. Now it says there's no policy action, so in the long run there's gonna be a self-adjustment. Because price level increase, wages and resource prices will eventually also increase, that'll decrease the short run aggregate supply, putting us back at full employment. So the answer to question number four, what's gonna happen to real GDP in the long run? It's going to stay the same. In the long run, the economy is gonna adjust, and so the real GDP is going to stay the same. For number five, the natural rate of unemployment is also going to stay the same. Remember, the natural rate of unemployment is based on frictional and structural employment, and neither of those are going to change. Something else like new technology that's going to increase structural unemployment or new laws by the government might affect frictional unemployment, but neither of those are going to change with this example. Okay, that's it for part two, and even if you did great, you definitely need more practice. And that's why I made this. It's a practice sheet that covers everything you need. There's one with all the answers in my ultimate review packet, and there's a complete different one for teachers in my teacher worksheets. If you're interested, follow the link in the description below. Okay, let's keep going. In part one, you had to draw the graph. In part two, you had to explain what was happening in the short run and the long run when there's a change in the economy and there's no policy. In part three, you have to practice what's gonna happen when the government gets involved and do some calculations. Good luck. The first thing you had to be able to do is calculate the spending multiplier. It's one over the marginal propensity to save. Since the marginal propensity to consume was 0.8, the marginal propensity to save is 0.2. So one over 0.2 is five. That's the spending multiplier. And notice this question says, assume instead they're talking about a different situation when the economy has a negative output gap. The potential GDP is 540 billion. The actual GDP is only 500. So there's a gap of $40 billion. If the spending multiplier is five and the negative output gap is 40 billion, we have to increase government spending by a minimum of $8 billion. Eight times five is 40 billion and that could close that negative output gap. Now, even if you knew that, there's two things here that can mess you up and not give you the points on your test. Number one is you have to show your work. Make sure you have the equation to show how did you get that answer. And number two, you had to say there was an increase of government spending, not just $8 billion. You had to say an increase of $8 billion. Trust me, those little details matter. Don't mess that up. Now, in question two, it's talking about taxation. We know I have to tax more than spending because taxation has less of an effect on the economy. The tax multiplier is the marginal propensity to consume divided by the marginal propensity to save, or one less than the spending multiplier. So if the spending multiplier was five, the tax multiplier is only four. But remember, the tax multiplier is always negative. And if we're trying to close a $40 billion gap, we have to decrease taxes by $10 billion. Again, make sure you showed your work and said it was a decrease in taxes, not an increase in taxes. For number three, they're talking about transfer payments like welfare. It's not government spending. It's kind of like the tax multiplier because it's one less than the spending multiplier. So again, if the spending multiplier is five, the transfer payments multiplier is only four. So here the right answer is also
also $10 billion, but it's an increase in $10 billion. Just remember, when there's an increase in government spending, all that money is added to the economy. When there's an increase in transfer payments, that first round isn't part of GDP. So when the government gives your grandma money, that's not part of GDP, that's not government spending, but when she spends that money, that's gonna get multiplied. Okay, one more question. Identify a specific automatic stabilizer that could return the economy to full employment. This is not talking about the idea of a long-run self-adjustment. This is non-discretionary fiscal policy. These are laws that are already on the books and in this case will increase government spending or decrease taxes and return the economy to full employment. So you could say things like unemployment insurance, welfare, or a progressive income tax system. What doesn't work here is anything about wages or resource prices falling and the short act supply shifting to the right. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about fiscal policy. Okay, that's it. I hope you did well. If you need more help, take a look at my ultimate review packet or my tips video. Thanks for watching. Till next time.